Now let us consider two water molecules under a water column. As you can see from this diagram, now these two molecules have attractive forces to each other. From your high school physics, you know these even, even to calculate these attractive forces. How do you do it? It is F is equal to M1, M2 into G over R squared. Now, not only these two have attractive forces, but also each molecule has attraction forces 3D 360 degrees. So, basically, they are balanced. Now, let us bring these two water molecules to the surface. As you can see, there is a resultant unbalanced upward force. All other forces, the horizontal forces are balanced, but there is something to the vertical. Now this unbalanced force is acting on the surface, and that is the surface tension force. Therefore, we can define the surface tension as the force acting across the unit length of a line drawn in the surface due to the unbalanced attraction. Now remember, this is per unit length. Now this surface tension force even can change the shape of the surface. Now that is what we call the minuscule. Remember, it can be concave or convex. The surface is not flat. It is a curve. <clears throat> That's because of the surface tension. Now, can you think why drops of liquids are to be spherical? Take uh, the examples of raindrops. <clears throat> Why they are spherical? Find out the reason. Now let us uh, understand the physics of a bubble. What do we mean by a bubble? A bubble has a surface or surfaces of liquid and air inside. Let us have a hemisphere of a bubble. Now we have two surfaces. One is the curved surface and the other one is the flat surface, that is the hemisphere circle surface. Now this circular surface is balanced by the forces. As you can see, there should be a, an upward force, according to this diagram, an upward force acting on the surface. That is from the pressure or the air pressure of the other hemisphere. How do we find this upward force? We know the formula to find the pressure. Pressure is force divided by the area perpendicular to the force. So we know how to calculate the pressure force. If we consider the radius of the sphere to be r, the area is pi r squared, and the pressure is p, so the pressure force acting upwards is p pi r squared. Now that upward force has to be balanced by a downward force, which is the surface tension force. If we consider the surface tension to be sigma, and remember it is acting along the length, so the only length we have in this surface is the circumference or the perimeter. And that has to be 2 pi r. If we consider the surface tension to be sigma, so we have 2 pi r sigma as the surface tension force. Now let us equate these two. We have P 
is equal to 2 sigma over r. Now remember, soap acts different to the other liquids. It has two surfaces. Therefore, it has two perimeters. That lead us to have two surface tension forces. And the equation changes to P is equal to 4 sigma over R. Now there is a classroom problem and you can uh, try that example. It, it's just an application of the equation what we have just learned. Now we will move to the application of this surface tension, capillarity. What do we mean by capillarity? Okay, I'm sure you heard this word. But let us look at the physics of this capillary. Now, when you insert or when you submerge a, a skinny vertical tube to a liquid column, you can see a rise or a drop of the liquid column inside this skinny tube compared to the outer surface. Why is that? Well, it is due to the surface tension. If it is increasing, we'll say it is the capillary rise. And if it is decreasing, we'll say it is the capillary drop. How do we look at, oh, how do we form a mathematical equation to get this capillary rise and capillary drop. Now, <clears throat> we have to look at the forces acting on this water or the liquid column. Now, initially this liquid column is moving. So, there should be a resultant force. What is that resultant force? Has to be the surface tension. How do you find the surface tension? If you know the surface tension sigma, then you can convert it to the surface tension force by multiplying the applied length. Now, what could be the applied length here? It has to be the circumference or the perimeter of the skinny tube. If the diameter of the tube is d, we know pi d is the perimeter and we can have the surface tension force. Now let us consider the capillary rise. We'll consider the capillary rise. Rise is positive. Now if we mark the forces, upward force is the surface tension force. Due to the meniscus, we wouldn't be having a, a clear upward force from the surface tension, but it is angled theta to the vertical. Therefore, we have to find the vertical component of the surface tension force. So, the total surface tension force is sigma pi d and the vertical component is sigma pi d cos theta. Now, that has to be equal to the downward force. What is downward force? It has to be the self-weight of the liquid column. How do we find the self-weight of the liquid column? We just learned about the mass density. Density rho is equal to m divided by volume. If we can find the volume, then we can find the mass. So that we can find the weight. Now, this rise is a cylinder. See carefully, it has raised or raised to a height of h and then we have a circular cross section that's a cylinder so the volume is pi d squared over 4 into the h therefore the weight is pi d squared over 4 into h into rho g let us equate these two forces, upward and downward forces, because we have the equilibrium. 